All right, today we are going to do a tutorial. I have owed my friends Ashley and Lana way too long. I think we talked about doing this last summer and then I just forgot. So sorry ladies, but we're doing this now. Today we are going to make some eyelets. And it's a really simple little practice that you're going to see in a lot of medieval to early modern clothing. I'm just going to mark a couple of these while we chat. So, lo and behold, the zipper didn't come into existence until the 20th century, basically. And before that, there were a finite number of ways people could close up their garments. You could use lacing, like what we're doing. You could do nothing at all and just nothing at all and just belt things. Buttons were an option. There's a couple others, but lacing was super popular during early modern and medieval, which is what the three of us like to do a lot. So, first off, we're going to do a really simple basic eyelet, which is just whip stitching. A slightly fancier eyelet that involves some variations on a buttonhole stitch. And then the piece de resistance for all of you is going to be how to put these metal rings into your eyelets. Now this was a really popular way to reinforce your eyelets at, during the 16th century as garments started becoming more fitted and the eyelets needed a little bit more oomph to them in order to keep them from ripping out. But before you can do these, you need to learn how to do basics. So let's get started with some basics, huh? Okay, so the first step that I want to do in order to do these eyelets is run some basting stitches on either side of the lacing strip I'm about to do. That's going to help stabilize the usually two layers of fabric you are going to be sewing these eyelets through. Um, when you don't do this, it's going to potentially roll one side of the fabric out or the other, and it can just kind of make them uneven. It's not to say that historically they didn't do that, but it's just best practice in my experience and keeps them really neat and tidy. Now, we're not going to cut holes into our lovely fabric for these. We're going to spread the weave apart with an awl, and that and it either look like this ergonomic modern awl or more like one of these bone ones from Burnley and Trowbridge. There's other people who sell them as well, but these are what we're gonna use to make the holes that we're then sewing around. I've had a long day at work, so I'm gonna use the ergonomic version. And you want to be careful not to stab your hand underneath so I will spread my fingers apart and center this little guy right in there and push through. Super easy. And the larger diameter you're all, the bigger your hole's gonna be. You can also control this a little bit by how far down you push it on the all, push the hole down the all. There we go. So for the first one of these that we're gonna do, I just want to do a really basic whip stitch around the edges. You're gonna find this in medieval examples all the time, and it's just a super simple basic one. It's always good. I like to sink my thread a little bit farther back and then bring it back over here. That gives me a tail I can tuck in later using my needle. And for me, I'm going to do a couple of quick stitches. Now this is waxed buttonhole thread. And you seriously can just do a couple of quick stitches here as I catch some snips. Have your snips nearby. I want 
I like to go around and almost create spokes. And this is gonna help keep this open and keep it from fraying in those first couple stitches that I'm doing. I love doing eyelets into linen because it does split so nicely when I'm doing these. Highly recommend. But depending on the weave of fabric that you're doing this with, it might be harder. All right, so we've got a basic six stitches around the edge to try and keep the weave open. And I'm gonna go back through and fill in one or two stitches between each of the spokes I just created. There we go. And we're just whipping around the edges. This is going to help keep this hole open so that you can get points and aglets through here. And yes, my thread is probably way longer than it needs to be to do this, but I'm okay with that. Now, the reason we used the awl to separate this out rather than, or separate the weave rather than just cutting a hole out with it, because believe me, when I first started making these, I just cut a hole is this helps keep it strong and protects the integrity of your fabric. All right, so just doing a quick knot on the back side, and I'm going to bury my needle through the rest of these stitches right here. And if we were doing another one of these stitches, with the buttonhole thread, I could just travel the thread down to my next spot and start sewing that one. But we're gonna call that a day and try another type of thread here with our next pretty buttonhole. All right, so for our next one, we're gonna start the same way. We're gonna pierce it with an awl Force that in as best we can. I kind of want these to be even, so we're going to use the same one. I like to do from both sides, I'll push through from the front and then from the back to kind of evenly spread this out and keep it from caving in on more on the front or the back, just spreads it out more evenly. Okay. And from this hole, I'm gonna do the same thing where I sink my knot farther up. And I'm going to bring it back over to the outside of my buttonhole, or my eyelet. You're gonna keep, keep hearing me call it that. Okay, and to do the buttonhole stitch around this one, I'm going to go from underneath with my needle, pull it up into the top fabric, wrap my thread loop around it, and pull it out. 
and then I'm going to lay this thread off to the side and just keep doing that in circles all the way around. Be careful not to over, over pull on this one one way or another as you're working your way around. You want kind of even tension because otherwise you get lopsided buttonholes. This time I am using two strands of cotton embroidery floss that I have waxed. You can get that by going and taking a standard thing of embroidery floss that comes in six strands and splitting it down. Two is just kind of what I had on hand left over from another project. But you could definitely do thicker I think I usually use three when I'm going around these, which is why it's a little more spaced out in my stitches than usual. So there's normally another thread filling that in. Now, because I've gone through and stitched all these basting lines in, it actually does not hurt it if I start rotating the fabric a bit to help me keep my tension. So this particular style of eyelet is not as common in the medieval period from what I can tell. It looks pretty, but there's not as many examples of it. So if you're trying to do more of a general impression, I guess, this one would probably be the better general impression. I kind of like how that little ridge defines my eyelid a little bit better. If I'm lacing myself up, it helps me find my lacing holes in the dark a little bit easier. But that's mostly personal taste speaking out right there. This buttonhole, buttonhole, this eyelet style also takes just a hair more thread than the basic whip stitch version because you are creating that ridge along the edge of it. join this up to the first stitches. Ta-da! All right, so I'm gonna do a tiny knot through the top of this to connect the two ridges together and kind of pull them tight. And then sink this through to the back side of the eyelet. Because I've already tied that knot, I can go ahead and weave this into the edges and just bury my tail in my fabric. That will keep this nice and secure so we don't have to worry about it. Just make sure you don't do that and have your thread come out. So maybe we'll bury the edge this way. third trick, we're going to start adding in some rings. Okay, and then when it comes to these rings, that's when it starts to get a little interesting. So this is going to go on the back side. 
There we go. And you're gonna hold this in place with the, basically pinch it in around your eyelet hole. You don't want the hole to be larger than your ring. And I'm first, just for sake of ease, I'm going to do a couple of those little spokes that we did on the first eyelet style because it makes it so much easier to do this eyelet when you're not having to pinch that ring into place. We're gonna sew over all of these little preliminary stitches anyway. So no need to worry about them showing. Five. Okay, and we're pushing this through and back to the front side. There we go. So now my ring is held in place and I can focus on holding the fabric with my hands. And we are going to work the needle around this so it's pinching it and it's gonna be covering up the back side of that ring. So you'll push it through, and I like to then do another one of these little guys. It's one of the earliest versions of these eyelet rings that I can think of is actually in Patterns of Fashion 3. It's the burial dress for Eleanor of Toledo in Florence. They had been using lacing rings in a decorative sense in Florence in the previous century. So it kind of makes sense that as fashions changed and the lacing rings became less of a draw and fashion statement, they still might actually enjoy the reinforcement having that metal there gave them. So you will see these on the side back lacings for satanas or petticoats, dresses, that sort of thing. And it carries on for a couple hundred years there. I remember when I was doing a little bit of research on this a few years ago, I found a reference to it in the 18th century on a bodice. So I don't think they were still recycling a 200 year old dress at that point. But who knows, maybe. So you're getting this lovely little ridge still going around our eyelet. And depending on how committed I am to having this look really modernly polished. I might go around it a second time, but it doesn't look like that was really the worry or the case in the 16th century. And just as a status check, we're encasing this ring slowly but surely. Now, um, not a sponsored thing, but I usually like to get my rings for doing this from Renaissance Fabrics. And I try to get the same size each and every time. That way I just know that my lacings are going to fit through my rings no matter which dress I'm using. So that's my simple little hack there. I would not recommend using jump rings from the jewelry department at your craft store for this. They're just not gonna be sturdy enough. The copper or aluminum alloys those are made out of are designed to bend with pliers pretty easily. Whereas these won't, they're, they're really solid. Usually brass in my experience or steel and gonna be really handy for keeping your stuff 
from shredding out these eyelets. Okay, and we are almost done. If you notice right here, that stitch without the ridge attached to it is one of our basting loops that we did originally. So just by stitching over it, we're going to be able to encase it, make it look like it was part of the grand design the whole time. And there we go. That is sewing rings into your eyelets. For your dresses. Uh, you can also do this on doublets to help support hose. Um, just about anything where you're lacing and you think you might need some extra reinforcement to keep things from ripping. So I hope this was helpful to you. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that like button so the content gets out to more folks. You can subscribe to see more historical sewing tidbits, tips, tutorials, dress diaries, all that sort of fun stuff. So while we take a look at some finished eyelets on a couple of finished garments, I'm just going to remind all of you that Cozy is coming up here soon. I'm going to leave the links down in the description, but it is that last weekend in August and it's replacing Coke COVID. So if you enjoy tutorials like what we are doing today, I think you are going to love this completely free online event put together by all of our friends here at CauseTube. The awesome thing about this is, like I said, it's completely free and it's a coordinated effort to get out a bunch of panels and videos and tutorials, not unlike this one. So if you are enjoying this, please go and check out their Instagram or Facebook pages for more information. You can see some of the creators like myself that are going to be working on stuff for the event and check them out early, see what they're up to. And stay tuned for schedules and Instagram events, all that other fun stuff that we're putting together for everybody this year.